it's always a wonderful thing when your parents speak well of you or they speak well over your life. One of the things that uh, I think we've all valued very much in most of 2020 when we've had to be in the context of our own homes and lockdown is to rethink our relationships, look at the depth and the meaning of the relationships between genders, between parents and their children, uh, between uh, relatives and others in the extended family. Those relationships are the things that are important to our well-being, they're important to our future, and I believe they're important to the purpose of God. We've been looking over the last couple of weeks now at the uh, songs or uh, sounds of Christmas, and uh, one of them, which we looked at last week, was the song that was sung by Mary, the mother of Jesus, as she, moved by the Holy Spirit, recognized all the wonderful things that God was doing through her and uh, going to do to her as well. One of the things that I want us to consider today is just how the words of a parent, the prophetic expressions of a parent over a child are of great, great value. And the things you and I say over our children are going to be of great consequence and of great significance and importance to them. One of those wonderful expressions happens around the Christmas season, uh, or just before the Christmas season, I should say, in the scriptures, in the first chapter of the Gospel according to Luke. Let's stay together as we look at what God wants us to hear and to know about what we can say over our own children. My name is Reverend Kwame Ribadiri, and you're watching CTEM Church Online. The Gospel according to Luke opens with the story of a priest. His name is Zacharias, and he is given the great responsibility um, of the duty of going into the holy place of the temple to give the sacrifices on behalf of the nation of Israel. And while he's there, he's visited by an angel, and he's given an amazing message that the prayers that he has prayed, that he has trusted God for over many years, he and his wife, will now be answered. They had been married for many years, but they'd never had any children. And now God said, you are going to have a child, a son, but not just any ordinary son. He would be a son that would be used by God to bring about uh, the announcement of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, of course, Zachariah finds this so hard to believe. He's an old man. He's you know, been without children most of his life. And now to hear this news, he finds it very hard to take in. So he is made dumb. He's unable to speak for the entire duration of the gestation of his son and uh, just at the time when his son is born and is about to be uh, circumcised by the tradition of the Jew Jews at the time uh, he's to be named he's to be given a name and uh, he gives clear instructions that the name God had given is the name John of course he would later be known as John the Baptist uh, and the people his relatives found that so strange because no one else in the family was given that name but he insists he says no his name was, is going to be called John. And as he makes that as, um, assertion, he is allowed to speak. His voice comes back and he sings this song. It's described as Zechariah's song. It's a prophetic expression in the first chapter of the gospel according to Luke. Luke chapter 1, verses 67, uh, all the way to 70, uh, to all, yes, all the way to 79. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he said through his holy prophets of long ago, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant, the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him. And verse 76, And to you, my child, speaking over his own son, you will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven, to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, 
to guide our feet into the path of peace. This wonderful expression, first acknowledging that God keeps his wonderful word, he keeps his promises. This assertion that uh, the Lord has watched over his word through generations, through ancestors, and uh, through uh, th th things that have happened to the nation of Israel. None of that has deterred him. None of that has stopped God keeping his word. And now a faithful father, a devout man, and his wife insist on following the purpose of God and making sure that their son fulfills his promise. And Zechariah speaks over his baby son, John, and says to him, you will be a prophet who will usher in the coming of the great Messiah. He speaks of the glory of God coming over his son and through his son's ministry uh, because of his own obedience and his faith and confidence in God. He speaks purpose and he speaks life over his son. And the Bible records in the last verse of the chapter that this, this child grew and became strong in spirit. And I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that his parents, especially his father, continued to encourage him, continued to speak over him until he understood, until he uh, grasped and embraced the purpose that God had given to him. We've been through a great deal in 2020 and a lot to discourage us, a lot to make us think through, well, will our children really make it? Will they be able to finish their education? Will there be resources to, to keep them and to help them? I, I believe that this song, this Christmas song that was shared by uh, Zachariah over his son is a song that we should also embrace by faith for our own children. The circumstances of the future are unknown to us, that we are uncertain about them, but we can be certain of this one thing, the purpose for which God gave all of us life and the purpose that God gave our children life will be fulfilled regardless of the circumstances that we find ourselves growing up into. So embrace God's word, embrace his promises, and speak life and purpose over your children. God bless you.